morning. Good morning. That was very good, I tell you. We got a whole bench full of real pretty girls here this morning. How many of you have ever been to a party? Yeah. You know, we all like to go to parties. Uh, we have birthday parties, and we have graduation parties, and we have all of those. And How many of you have ever had to organize or plan a birthday party or a party? You've had planned parties? Well, I just want to tell you, if you have to, it takes a lot of work sometimes. The first thing you have to do is to make sure that you get all the invitations sent out. So you send the invitations out, you know, and sometimes you ask for a reply, sometimes you don't, you just invite folks. And once you send the invitations out, then you got to prepare all the stuff that you're gonna have at your party. Now let's just talk about a simple party, for example. Let's talk about a birthday party. So the first thing we think about when we have a birthday is a, a cake, a birthday cake. So we're gonna have a birthday cake. Now we also, at a birthday party, we have cake and ice cream. Ice cream. And then, you know, usually we have uh, these pretty, uh, we have graduation parties too. Party hats. Oh yeah, right, that's what I was gonna tell you. Now we have party hats, and sometimes we have the little horns that we can blow and balloons and all of that. You gotta make sure you got all of that ready for your party. Well then the day comes and you got to get your house cleaned up and have everything ready so everybody will show up for the party. And everything is ready. What would happen if nobody showed up? That wouldn't be good, would it? That's right, we'd be in our room crying. Well, I want to tell y'all a story. It's actually found in God's Word about a king who was going to have a party. His son was going to be married. This man was a king, so he was rich. This was going to be really some kind of fabulous party. And so he sent the invitations out to all the people that he wanted to come to the party. And he got all the preparations made. The palace was done right. All the food was prepared. Everything was ready the day of the party. Nobody showed up. Well, the king didn't know what to do. So the king called his servants in, and he said, I tell you what, I want you to go out into the streets and into the country roads or into the fields or wherever you can, and everybody you see, you invite them to the party and tell them they can come. And sure enough, that's what they did. And before long, the uh, banquet hall there at the palace was full, and they really had a fine party. But I tell you that story because that story has a meaning. And if I can get my piece of paper wherever I laid it down, I want to tell you the king, yeah, that's it. I just want to make sure I get all these right. In this particular story, I want you to know that the king was God. And of course, the, the son was his son, Jesus. And it tells us that as he sent the people out, we can start way back even in the Old Testament with the prophets that went out and they wouldn't listen. And you go over in the New Testament, and even when Jesus came, he was rejected. But it tells us in this story that the king of being God, that, uh, the son being Jesus, we know that an invitation has been sent out. And when he sent the last time, he said, I'm going to send you, the Bible actually says, into the highways and byways, and you go into all the world, and you invite them. I want you to know that each one of you is part of that invitation. We have been invited to the banquet that God is going to hold for his son Jesus in heaven. But to be a part of it, we have to accept the invitation. All of those people who got the invitation and didn't accept it, they missed the beautiful banquet and all the things that were being given. But we've all received that invitation. But for us to be at the banquet, we'll have to accept. And that means we have to accept Jesus as our Savior. And then if we accept him as Savior and we put him in our heart and love in our life and we trust him, one day we're going to be able to go to that big celebration where God is honoring his son Jesus and we'll be in heaven for eternity worshiping him. Let's have our prayer circle this morning. Okay. God, we just thank you so much that you love us. We thank you that you sent us the invitation. And Father, we just pray that we would be worthy to attend, that we have opened our hearts, lives, and minds to you. And Father, we look forward to the day that we can celebrate at that great banquet with you and your son Jesus. 
We thank you for our time together here this morning. Bless us and watch over us, for we ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen. <laughs> The first thing I'd like to, to tell you is we're going to have a short business meeting immediately following our service today, so I want you to be here for that. The other thing is we got a full slate of activities coming up this week, and I want you to be aware that on Wednesday, first of all, this one isn't in the bulletin. It's pit cleaning night. We would like for all the men that can to be at the pit up behind Wizzes at 5 o'clock Wednesday afternoon. It's quite a chore, but the more people we have up there, the easier it is. So I would encourage you, if you can, you be at the pit up there behind Wizzes at 5 o'clock on Wednesday. It's just one of the rituals we have to go through before we start the barbecue is make sure the pit's clean, the screens are clean, and uh, it's work. I don't mind telling you. Don't wear your Sunday clothes. Bring you some gloves and um, probably ought to use deodorant because you will sweat. Uh, but I want you to come and, and to be a part of that as, as we prepare uh, the pit for the barbecue. And then, of course, uh, that night, um, I don't know, is Deb going to have an activity for our children? Okay, uh, so starting at 5, 5.30 or 6? 5.30. We will have an activity for our children here at the church starting at 5.30. Then at 6 o'clock, uh, we'll have a food and fellowship in the back and a seasonal prayer for the adults. And the youth are here. Brother Justin will take them across to the Axe House, and we'll have an activity for everybody. I also believe our choir practice this week is here. Is that correct? Uh, so uh, First Baptist will be coming here Wednesday night for our uh, Christmas cantata practice, so we'll be meeting here at the church. I uh, also want you to notice um, next uh, Sunday uh, is a shower, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be across at the Axe House. Is that right, Becky? Uh, and just want you to put that on your calendar and support this young couple. But Saturday is a big day in our church, and I've asked you before, everybody put that on your calendar. This is our annual church barbecue. Uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, I want to tell you that the barbecue has been one of those things that a lot of people at the beginning didn't know that that would be an outreach. But that has been a blessing from God. I want to tell you that we have people calling us now who want to come. They love the barbecue. And it's one way of getting them in our church. We will, we will serve probably uh, over 1,000 plates. And as the people come, you know, we've gotten a, a good reputation not only for our barbecue, but for our church, that we're a church that loves this community and is willing to serve. So I want you to come and be a part of that Saturday. We need everybody in the church to be here. There's something you can do. Uh, you can spoon beans or you can do coleslaw, but there, there's something that everybody can do. And it's a great day of fellowship, so we're looking forward to uh, a, a great day here on Saturday as we have our annual barbecue. Uh, a couple other things that are happening on the 24th. The seniors are going to the mountains. Uh, we're going to meet here at the church. going to leave at 9 o'clock, so you can put that on your calendar for the seniors. And also on the 29th, we'll have the Lord's Supper, and we're going to have a that afternoon a harvest party for our children. So those are the activities that we have coming up in the near future. Uh, do any of you have an announcement or an emphasis that needs to be made? Just remember, we need the big pots and your, your gas cooker. Yeah, the pots. So uh, we need, what, six or seven at a minimum? Yeah. Okay. We got them this morning. We got more than what we needed out of the bin. Okay. So uh, this morning, I'm leaving my house. Now, the bean cookers, uh, the pit crew needs to be here at, the, at when, Saturday morning? What time? Saturday morning, I'd say it's at the pit at 5 o'clock. Okay. So if you're helping at the pit, you need to be here at 5 o'clock. I think the bean crew, we started about nine. Is that right, Homer? Yeah. And he donates until 
I know, I know. That's why I'm asking. But we, we're going to need some folks here. Uh, Mr. Homer has always been the, the chief bean cooker. And uh, uh, he's like me. Uh, we're on the downside of the hill, so we'll, we'll need some young backs here to help us with that. And uh, we're looking forward to it. So, again, there will be a place that you can serve Saturday, so be here. And, again, at the pit at 5 and the bean cookers here by 9 o'clock. Any, any other announcements? I want to thank Mr. Homer for the lovely flowers that are placed in our sanctuary today, and they're placed in memory of Miss Rosetta Clamp. And, Mr. Homer, we thank you so much. Now, y'all y'all have your back turned. Y'all couldn't see that. But June reminded me. <laughs> okay. Uh, but anyway, thank you, June. Any others? If not, we're going to ask you to join us as we have our offertory selection. We're going to sing, He Keeps Me Singing. Let's all stand. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low. Fear not, I am with thee. Peace be still in a loveless ebb and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing. Keeps me singing as. Feasting under and strive, discard filled. 